Good morning. Morning, everyone. Morning, morning. Morning, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, only the Lord and my mum call me Stephen. So, um, so thanks, Christopher. Thanks, Christopher, for that. Uh, we are taking a pause in our sermon series this morning, and I'm here to bring just a simple word today. Uh, we plan our sermon series about a year in advance, but we leave room in the calendar year for to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to his church. And uh, that's what I've got a privilege of doing today. Back in September, uh, Viv and I, at the end of our vision talks, I, almost like a Christmas ball boy, I left something dangling. I said, uh, I've got something stirring in me, uh, a vision for men, something that the Lord has been speaking to me about uh, for men. Uh, I found out on Tuesday this week that a bunch of our intercessors had been praying for five days and fasting for men for five days. Uh, And so it was a real confirmation about what the Lord wanted me to preach on today. So today, I'm going to speak about how to be a strong and courageous man. So ladies, (laughs) you can turn off. I'm I'm giving you permission to go to sleep. Download the new EP songs, sign up to a small group, check Vinted for a new scarf. <laughs> I give you permission for the next however long to, to switch off, because um, this is a message for men. Uh, let, me, let me just say as well, I'm not here to give an expository on uh, biblical masculinity. Uh, I'm also not here to shame, embarrass, expose men. I mentioned porn just twice in the talk, so it's not a talk where I'm wanting to make men feel guilty and squirm. Uh, This is a prophetic word for this time and this season, and my hope is to remind some of you, one of you, a few of you men, to call you back to the Lord. Uh, Just like the Apostle Paul says, my message is not with wise or persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And so what I'm here this morning to do is call men back to the main and the plain. And then uh, we're going to just spend some time releasing the power of God to, uh, for men and to men. Is that all right? Uh, I spoke to a couple of men about this, and they told me they weren't going to come. <laughs> uh, but I see you. I see you here. So uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. So Jesus, just bless, uh, bless our time. Uh, help me to communicate within 28 minutes. And I just pray for all of us here, just that we would hear what your Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, amen. So I've got a couple of scriptures. Uh, Joshua 1, 6 to 9, and it, and it says this. It says, be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written on it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. This is the word of God, and it's absolutely true. And it was given to you and me in love. Where Viv and I, we mentioned the other week that people change when they're on a quest or they're in a crisis. It's been such a reality for us the last eight years of leading uh, this church. We've seen people change when they partnered with Jesus and his cause on a quest. But also we've seen people, we've seen Jesus meet people in a crisis. We've seen Jesus meet people right in the, in the dirtiest of pits. And uh, he's the one that brings his rescuing uh, hand back and helps people in, in a crisis. So we, we've seen this. And so men, I'm going to try not to look at ladies. Um, please go to sleep. This is not a message for you. Men. Men, are you on a quest or are you in a crisis? 
Or are you just slumbering, getting through life? That's my message. So here's some bad news, men. Everything, everything that is coming against us right, right now as a man, from our culture, from the media, from the world around us, but also from our own passivity, even those of us who are older and wiser uh, amongst us, uh, but also for some of you guys in the younger generations, if our future generations will suffer more. I can just see our, our future generations of men suffering more than any, any other generation. We need a revival amongst men. We need it like never before, which is why I imagine these bunch of intercessors have been fasting for us, praying for us as men. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Uh, we need a revival more than ever before. Um, if we can get men, the rest of humanity will follow. It's as simple as that. If we get men, the rest will follow. But if we're weak now, we'll cave in then. Uh, so the question is, what should we do? What should we do? Do you want some more bad news? Um, <laughs> Fasten your seatbelts. Um, just some observations, really, of what I see amongst men, what I see in my own life, but what I've just observed on, about men in this, uh, in this time. Uh, four issues that I see as far as... F- uh, four, four issues I see as far as... Four issues. <laughs> <laughs> Inability to be coherent. <laughs> Five issues. <laughs> Okay, number one. Uh, some of us, some of us men, we've just got this inability to make decisions. Some of us just go back and forth around the same mountains, not able to be sure if their own convictions are right, and we just get stuck in things that uh, we're, un- we're just unable to decide. What, 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 what can I do? And we just get stuck. Uh, the book of James 1 comes to mind where it, where it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And so the inability to make decisions, the fruit of that leads to lives of instability. And it leads leads to lives of uh, unsafety for others. Number two, uh, loss of time. (laughs) Some of us started out life, right? We started out life with big plans, big dreams, big ideas. And then we just got distracted, sidetracked, waylaid. We got a bit bogged down in the things of life. Uh, some of us men, we're, we're not at the point we wanted to be when, when we were young. In our lives, in our careers, in our relationships, in our, in our uh, fellowship of the Lord, in how we meet with the Lord, we're not where we want to be. And so we just lost time. Some of us are shocked and amazed that 10 years has just gone by. Oh, that's 10 years. Uh, number two, regrets. The, I guess this follows on a, a bit about loss of times. Uh, all the things that we were meant to do, but we haven't done yet. Now, this isn't just like practical stuff. Um, I've got loads of projects at home that I haven't, haven't done yet. It's not about that. It's those things that we were meant to do, whether it's for the Lord or for others or for ourselves. And there's a real temptation on men just to lie down and just let things happen. Uh, To give up being strong. Uh, Some of us are approaching middle age. I'm... Some of us. (laughs) I'm just in my 40s, so I can kind of go... Just, I'm just in my forties. Let me just say, this isn't the end of the game. This is half-time oranges. We're not at the end of the game. This is half-time oranges for some of us. This isn't the end. You've reached forty. Oh, that's the end. I'm just going to grab my oranges and let's go again for the next half. Um, regret, the fruit of regret, it prevents us from keeping going. It stops us from maintaining this long-term vision as a result. And so there's, lo- there's loads of us who just live with regrets. Uh, number two, uh, number four, 
Let's go back. A compromise. Some of us are just still messing around and playing the games that we played when we were young, when we were, when we were teenagers. We generally want to become like the Christ that we follow. Uh, it's this analogy, like I'm in an arm wrestle with Christ here, but he hasn't, I'm not letting Jesus win. I'm just going to keep fighting Jesus because I don't want to give up myself. I, wanna, I don't want to give up the stuff from the youth. Uh, and so we're just full of compromise. I, I'm, I said to one man recently, he's a couple of years younger than me, I, I said to him, we're not, dude, we're not teenagers anymore. How many times, how many more times are you going to run away uh, from the mountain that you need to face? You're just going to come back to the same mountain place again. Let's go together. Let's go up this mountain. Face your past mistakes and your ungodly desires head on. Let's do this. Many of us, we're compromising. We're just going round and round the mountain of compromise, but we're not facing them, not facing our past mistakes, not fully going it to be all that the Lord has promised. Uh, apologies, I've still got some more bad news. The question is, men, uh, are you going to play Christianity? Are you going to get into all sorts of groups, have all kinds of fun? Or are you going to be the kind of person that gets in the word of God and grows? Are you going to be the kind of person that gets in the word of God and in, in his word and in prayer and be conformed to the image of Christ, which is our heart's desire? That's the question. That's the question for men. Um, Christianity for men is, the formation side of Christianity for men is really, really tough. Becoming like Jesus as a man, it's, actually, it's hard work. Um, our temptations as men are difficult. Our shame and our anger not only buries deep inside of us, but it bores into us. It grinds and bores into us. We long to break the cycles of our own attitudes. But for some of us, we end up just making the same mistakes again and again and again. We, we, as men, we escape into fantasy, games, relationships, and porn. It just causes this rift in our authenticity of who we are and where we want to be. Uh, and the devil just doesn't just have these footholds, but he has these great canyons, these big wide open doors to us in our hearts and in our minds. And as a man, it's just this fight to read the scripture, isn't it? It's just a fight to read the scripture, let alone walk in it. That fight to just open up the Bible and read. And let me just say, man, it's not about our piety. It's not about us just getting to heaven. We don't just want to get to heaven. Uh, and I can tell you, I see so many of us, uh, young and old, uh, wasting our strength in just foolishness, outright childishness and sin. I just see it. Husbands rejecting their marriage vows. Single men being bandits to their sisters in Christ. I see it. Many, many men and women just chained to pornography. And so instead of being a man that, who lives in the word, we're chained, we're passive, we're shame-fueled and guilt-ridden. So then to even be thinking about joining a quest of rescuing other people, when inside, inter our internal shame and anger and depression eats, eats inside of us. And I want to tell you why. It's very, very simple. The enemy wants to prevent men from stepping into freedom. It's as simple as that. He wants to stop us from entering into his word, into prayer, let alone our divine purpose as man then to join in the Great Commission. So if the enemy can stop us from getting into the Word, he can stop us from getting involved in the divine, our divine purpose of, of mission. Okay, that was the bad news. Here's some good news. I'm going to try and smile a bit as well. Here's some good news. Uh, 
I believe we're in the brink of a, break, of a breakthrough, man. We're right there. Who's ever heard about a prayers and intercessors praying for men for five days? I've never heard about that. We're in the edge of a breakthrough. We're in the brink of seeing sold-out men in the kingdom of God. The revival we need as men starts today. We're right at the brink. Um, I'm not sure if there's any women listening. Uh, has anyone brought any scarves? <laughs> uh, but we need your help, women. Um, we need your prayers. We need your encouragement. Wives, would you pray for us? Would you, pray, would you carry on praying for me? <laughs> uh, men, we need men. Men, we need men not just to pray for us, but for us to form and fashion relationships to be like Christ. Uh, we need men to reach other men with the gospel and invite them in, just like we heard from Marlon. Men, I just want to give you some encouragement. We are about to enter a breakthrough. Here's some more good news. We must do, as, as a man, we must do what every generation of men do for us as men to become strong and courageous. Let's, uh, here are four ways I've learned and I'm learning about how to be strong and courageous. Here are four things. How to be a strong and courageous man. Stand firm in the scriptures, fight on your knees, die to self, and live for Christ and his cause. I haven't got any swooping graphics, I'm afraid. I've just got... So they're not going to come like 80s PowerPoint style where they're going to come <laughs> fading in. Fight, but stand firm in the scripture. Um... Uh, as I've seen, as, as men study and stand firm in the scriptures and they spend time in prayer before a holy God, as they live and are fed by the scriptures, um, men can stand when others fall as we stand in the scriptures. Um, when I see men that are in the scriptures, I go, yeah, I see it. Wow. Wow. Here's a man that's standing while others are falling. Uh, you see, we all know how the world's going to end, right? We all know. We all, we all know. It's not going to end like a Hollywood blockbuster movie. There's not going to be zombie apocalypse. We know how it's going to end. Don't we? We know how it's going to end. Jesus is coming back. Yes, thank the Lord. Uh, Christ, Christ's second coming will be bright, it will be loud, it will be glorious. This event won't be hidden in secret. Every human on the planet Earth will see him. He's going to come back personally and literally. Uh, Revelation 1.7 says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. There won't be a person on the Earth that will be unaware of Jesus' return. 30 years ago, I often wondered, is that, I can't, I can't see, if Jesus comes back to the Mount of Olives, every person on the earth won't see that. But now, with phones, I'm like, oh, that's how everyone's going to see him come in. <laughs> as, a, as a young Christian in my teens and 20s, I was convinced that Jesus was coming back soon. I, and I thought in my lifetime that I would be either sent to prison for the gospel, or I'd be martyred for it. When I was like a young 20, 21, who's 21 here? Any 21 year olds? 22? Yeah. I thought I was going to be, I was going to be sent to prison for the gospel. I was convinced of it, or I'd, I'd be martyred for it. I remember telling, <laughs> I remember telling Viv just after a few years of marriage <laughs> that my future was going to be in prison <laughs> or martyrdom because of the gospel. I think Abby, our daughter, had just been born. I remember looking at her face after I said it, because this is, this is a reality. I remember looking at her face after I said it, going, I wish I'd done this in pre-marriage. <laughs> um, we, we talked about it the other day, and that same face she gave me 20 years ago, she gave me the other day as well. <laughs> I remember saying to my best friend, he was, a, he was an ex-Muslim who turned to Jesus, and he talk, we talked about his persecution for finding Christ. And we would talk about the end times. 
and just suffering for the gospel, we, we would say to each other, um, I hope my jail cell is next to yours. I hope we would be in Wandsworth together, Wandsworth Prison together. <laughs> It's a true story. So we could kind of fellowship together. We could kind of pray together. Uh, men, it's a fight. If it's, it's a fight to get into the Scriptures. It's a fight to get into prayer. How much more is it a fight when you decide it's not all about you? And it's about this eternal legacy that we're leaving. Jesus is coming back. It's not about you. It's about the four billion people who've never heard the gospel. And when you decide to put your soldier's boots on and fight for rescuing people from hell, that's, that's when you, you're a strong and courageous man. And I, I, want us, I want us to say, let's fight for the souls of men and women that are destined to hell. Let's fight. So men, we must be strong. We can't be strong based on personality or needing to control situations. We're only as strong as we spend time before God, before his word, in prayer. Um, we, read, we read Joshua 1. What, you're like, where's the context, Steve? You've given me a scripture. What's this about? Jo- Joshua 1, uh, he comes, he's installed as the leader of the Israelites after Moses. And God tells him to get ready to enter the promised land, doesn't he? Uh, Joshua has to enter. He has to fight. He knows there's going to be bloody battles coming. What's he told to do? Is he told to gather the arms? Let's gather all the blacksmiths, start creating weapons. Oh, no. Is he told to control situations, to look like the leader in charge, to have everything together, to control is he told, Kesarasra, let's just see what happens. No, verse 8, what, he's, what is he saying? He's told to meditate upon the word of God. And that would make him strong and courageous. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Think about Christ. Christ would say things like, the man that gains his life loses it. The man that loses his life for my sake is the man who finds life. Jesus says things like, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what will be added? All these things will be added. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these other things will get added. So, so men, this is a call to stand on God's word, fight on our knees in prayer, and to die to self. Um, and I want to come to you guys. If today is the day of our revival, I want to come to you as, and my desire to turn up differently, uh, differently in, in my relationships, differently at work, differently with how I see myself, differently how I see my God, and differently how I see if I'm your pastor and leader, whatever title you want to give me. Uh, these last few weeks, I've been uh, reading, listening, watching uh, commentaries on uh, end times, <laughs> on uh, Jesus' teachings on the end times. I've been reading stories of the martyrs. Uh, can you imagine putting that on your CV? What are your hobbies and interests? Ah, <laughs> oh, I see you've, you like researching martyrdom. <laughs> That'd be a great interview, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, let me tell you about one, one guy, Jim Elliot. He was a missionary to a tribe in Ecuador who was desperate. He desperately tried to get people to become missionaries. Uh, he was martyred with several, several other missionaries in 1956. One day uh, after his martyrdom, a friend flew over the beach where Jim was murdered before the, the tribal village. And the pilot, the pilot right, said right there, that's where Jim died. And Jim's friend who was on the plane said, no, it wasn't. The pilot kind of turned around and said, no, 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 it was. I was, um, I was right there. I picked up his body right there. And the friend was 
No, no, no. I was with Jim when he died. He was with me in a little church several years ago when he offered, offered his life to Christ and chose to die to himself and live for Christ and him alone. Can you imagine that awkward, plain journey? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the guy, his friend said his tombstone was laid in that church. So men, when did you die? Where's your tombstone? Uh, God is calling us again, men, to offer our lives to him. Uh, When I was 16, I, I wanted to end my life. I was about to get kicked out of my home. I was a criminal, addicted to drugs, depressed and lonely, And I was walking through a park in in Epsom, near Epsom, in the pouring rain. And out of nowhere, I began crying out to a God that I didn't know. I began crying out. I remember saying, God, change me. Pouring rain, 16-year-old, God, change me. And then over the next coming weeks and months, I discovered Jesus. And I discovered this God that I didn't know I was crying out to. God met me in a crisis. I then discovered the Holy Spirit, got high on God, discovered him. God recalibrated my life and set me on a whole new trajectory, set me on a quest. When I was 16, 17, it's about 17, uh, uh, we saw someone uh, come out of a wheelchair. And at that moment, after we prayed for her, and in that moment, my life became a quest. And the purpose of my life, since I was a 16, 17-year-old, was to be a worshipper of God and a rescuer of men and women. And I've given my life specifically to the life of Christ's ministry of healing. I can tell you there's a spiritual tombstone in Oriel Park in Epsom, where I died, where I cried out to God. There are places up mountains uh, around this country where I've died to myself and, and lived for Christ again. The places in my home, in my office, around my home where I can pinpoint moments with Christ where I've given myself to him. The cross, the cross here is a place where I have to regularly come on my knees and offer myself again to Christ. I can show you the tear stains where, where God has met me. There's some tombstones here. Uh, God has recalibrated me, reset me, revived me, restored me. I've had to go, Jesus, this is your church. Build your church. This is your church. Men, our history with the Lord is one of dying to ourselves. That's what I'm trying to say. And what I'm trying to say with all humility is that the devil has been prowling around me all my life. And he prowls around you, men. I hope you've realized. He's out, he's out to... Um, he's, out, he's out for men. My life has been marked by suffering, marked by trauma, marked by pain, rejection, public humiliation, embarrassment from others, temptation, long COVID. The devil has tried to get me off my purpose, trying to keep me from being passive, slumbering. The devil is out to get you men. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy you. It's his mission because he knows what your mission is. Um, I'm way over time. I'm so sorry. I've hit other crises. Crisis? Crisis. Crisis. Just crisis. Crisis. Um, There's been other times where in my life I've just cried out to Jesus for my hope, my transformation. He's refocused me on the quest again. And I'm here to remind you, remind you back on your your quest. And I I can say, men, if he's done it for me and continues to do it for me, less than two years ago, I wasn't sure whether I'd ever recovered from COVID, mentally, spiritually, physically. I didn't know if our marriage would survive. The enemy was extremely close to winning that battle Uh, with Viv. Beautiful Viv, our, our incredible staff team, SP, Lucy, and others. Uh, we've had vineyard pastors around us, prophets, healers. I'll get it from anywhere. As I was, I'll get it from anywhere. I'm grateful for therapists, for the NHS. I'm grateful for my antidepressants, my sleeping tablets, more prayer. 
I'll just take anything. But it was Jesus who whispered me back to life. Uh, he whispered me, wake up, O sleeper. Rise up from the dead, for my light will shine on you. He whispers over me again and again. And men, there's a slumbering spirit over some of us today. And today's the day we want to break that off. Uh, and to call you to wake up, to call you to go again. So we want to break this slumbering spirit in men. Uh, some of the prayers over the last five days of intercession, of fasting for you, would be you, you and I as men would be known as oaks of righteousness, would be known as planted by the Lord, one who is sent, one who is marked by God, one who dreams of doing great exploits for the Lord and be used by God. You see, the prophets are excited. The intercessors are excited. <sighs> Any women listening now, you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> they're excited. They can see the potential, the possibilities, and they're here to encourage, to champion you. Wake up, sleeper. Christ, Christ will shine upon you. Wake up. Uh, I don't think it's any, anyone's fault, but men, we do have a responsibility to walk out. So I come with words, a lot of words. Uh, shall we invite the power of God to come? Uh, so I want all the men to stand.